one of the problem that I come across, they give uh, is a fluid dynamic uh, uh, fluid problem. And uh, they said uh, the gaze is a closed tank problem. 10 PSI was given and uh, PSI G was given. And uh, the second is a pump. Uh, I think uh, there's a pump. Uh, there's a pump in the uh, in the lower side of the reserve uh, reservoir. Or pump into the closed uh, tank. And uh, the question in here seems in fluid mechanic. Uh, they always say that uh, to use uh, absolute value. And the, this pressure, as I, I apply uh, the Bernoulli from the two level, like a, a, a state one, point one and point two, I use, uh, I apply Bernoulli equation mm -hmm. and it seems uh, the pump, I, I assume the pump is at zero. I put like a P1 equals zero. Mm -hmm. But P2, I have a 10 PSI key. I guess, assume I wanted that to convert this one to absolute and carry on. And Where, put the where are we defining state one and state two? I, I was using the, uh, the pump side. The, the inlet or the, the outlet? The inlet. Pump inlet. Is that where the gauge is? Yeah. Okay, so it's 10 PSI G at the pump inlet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Is that what you're saying? Or is that? Oh, no, no, no. The 10 PSIG will be in the pressurized tank. Okay. So that's over here. The point so this, two. Is, this is what you're but, calling state two. Yeah. Point two. And, it's, and you said it's a closed tank? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we know. But the, the pump, at the pump level, I put like a, as a P1 equals zero over there. Okay. So we're calling this state one. And what's the question? The question is, as um, if you if if you trying to put that ten psig in absolute, the problem will be wrong. So I have to use uh, the ten psig. Then at the end, I guess assume probably uh, at atmospheric pressure, which is a zero gauge use that terminology in order to solve after you know getting what, there what wrong. do we know about the pressure at the inlet of the pump you said you called it zero but what what was actually given in the problem statement about the inlet conditions uh because if the problem statement says that it's 10 psig inside uh, the tank and the tank is closed we know exactly what that means right we know 10 psig we could obviously convert that to PSIA if we wanted to, but that's known. That's a known quantity. Do we know what the pressure is at the inlet? The pressure for the pump uh, wasn't given. Then okay. since uh, I apply Bernoulli because I wanted uh, to get the pump head out of that, then I have to assume some of, uh, you know, make assumption. Well, what, what did we know about the suction side? Is this pumping from an open reservoir? No, there's another tank below, but did not. Another tank below. And is that yeah. tank open? Uh, I assume I didn't even look at that because oh, I need, was. Uh, we need to know what's going on on the suction. What is a pump? <laughs> a pump adds pressure. So the amount of pressure, the difference between what's before the pump and what's after the pump is the pressure that's added by the pump. That's like a super ultimate simplification oh. of, of pumping. So if we're going to explore how much head is being added by the pump, there's two ways we can think about that. One way is we can think about uh, what I'll call the sort of local conditions. So if I were to put a gauge on the suction side and a gauge Okay. On, on the outlet, then we could measure in real life, right? And, and we do this in real life. We could measure the differential pressure across the pump. And that would mm. be unequivocally for sure, the head added by the pump. 
Another way to think about it is if you were designing it, like this is what you would do in real life. If you had a pump that was operating, you just throw a gauge on both sides and subtract. But um, if you didn't have the luxury of building it first and then measuring, and you were just designing it, just doing it on paper and sort of predicting how it's going to work and maybe selecting a pump that is suitable for that application, you don't have the luxury of gauges. So then you look at the extents, you go far away from the pump and say, what is it pumping to? What's at the end of the line? What's at the end of the line is a closed tank. And we know what we require the pressure to be inside that closed tank. Okay, great. That's the story on the discharge side. What's the story on the suction side? Well, ultimately it comes from another tank. Is that tank open? Is that tank closed? What's the pressure over here? If it's open, then it's atmospheric pressure. Okay. I suspect that might be the case here because if it is atmospheric pressure, then that's zero PSIG to your point. So then we would say P1 is zero okay. and P2 is 10. And then the delta P is, of course, 10, right? 10 minus zero. Now you could convert both to PSIA, add 14.7 to this, add 14.7 to that, but ultimately it washes out because really it's the difference that we care about. So 10 minus zero is 10 and 25.7 minus 14, uh, 24.7 minus 14.7 is also 10. Yeah, but when I put like a absolute, like a plus of 10 plus of 14.7 mm -hmm. uh, for that, then the answer, I will get the wrong answer on that. No, because you have to add 14.7 to this as well. Atmosphere pressure is 14.7 PSIA. So this is the PSIG calculation. This is the PSIA calculation, but they both equal 10. Okay. Right? Because since I assume I use a Bernoulli equation, P1 over uh, gamma, it seems I assume as a zero, then I didn't even, probably that was a, since I didn't add that 14.7 there, because I assumed that as zero and a V, v, v1 over H2G. A would be P2 oh. minus P1 over gamma. Yeah, that's what you did. Yeah, but well, I assume as a P1 was zero, then I guess carry on on the P2 and go, but it did not. Okay, so let's do no elevation. Velocities are negligible. Yeah, I, I did all of that zero. Yeah. yeah. So, but there's there's definitely a delta P, right? Like, otherwise, what, what are we doing? What, why do we have a pump at all? We yeah. must have, we must have some delta P here. So if we assume P1 is zero, what do we mean? We mean zero PSIG. Yes. Right. So then if P2 is 10 PSIG, then the difference is 10. 10. Right? Yes. But yeah. if for my understanding to that, that 10 for me was 10 PSIG, not absolute. No, no, the different. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got you. Uh -huh. Okay, so... 10, let's actually write it out because this, I was, I was going fast here. 10 PSIG minus zero PSIG equals what? Of course it's 10. <laughs> of course it's 10. And what are the units? PSIG. PSI. <laughs> That's the way. Okay. So I use right. a PS. <laughs> right. So, because, okay. because it doesn't matter whether uh, it's gauge or absolute, okay, I as long it. as we're consistent. Okay, okay. And that's okay. why right here, we My problem here, that was 24.7 like... <laughs> PSI A minus 14.7 PSI A. What's the difference? 10. Oh. 10 what? PSI. PSI. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's right. You're... Wow. So I add, uh, <laughs> That's all I was. Add, uh, 14 to that to 20, uh, 24.7. Then I get wrong. So I see the different gave, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay. The delta T, wow, okay. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's such a silly thing, right? It's almost like wow. if, um, if we were measuring our, our heights off the ground, but, you know, then everybody decided that from now on, when we measure our height, we're going to stand on a stair. 
mm-hmm. or we're going to step down a stair, something like that. And then everybody's heights change, but they change by a fixed amount. That's what PSIG and PSIA is. It's the same information. It's just that it's offset by 14.7, but what it actually means is the same thing. So the difference is the same. Okay. Just changing okay. the datum. <laughs>